Hey everybody, Neil Malik from Knack Training here bringing you another Everyday Office video. And in today's video, I want to demonstrate how I used index and match, drop down menus, and conditional formatting to create a dynamic table and a dynamic chart based off this drop down menu. So as you can see here, I probably want to be able to have, for instance, region ones, week one, two, and three listed under week one, two, and three over here. And then I'd like a chart of that same information down below. Before I can do that, here in the region field, I need a drop down menu with the eight possible regions in it. So I'm going to use data validation to make that happen. I go to the data tab at the top of the screen, click on to data validation about two thirds of the way across the data ribbon. And we allow not any value, but rather a list, the fourth item down that menu. And the source of that list is of course all the regions and that would be cells A4 down to cell A11 and then click OK. And so I can quickly and easily choose the relevant region and use that to pull the relevant information into week one, two, three, and four over on the right. Now we're going to use a, an index and double match to be able to find the relevant region and the relevant week. So we start off with the formulas tab at the top of the screen. I'm in cell H4 and index and match functions are under lookup and reference. As you can see, index is about halfway down that menu. So choose index there and I click OK. Now it asks me where the possible cells are where these values could be. Well, the possible cells with the values are from cell B4 down and across the cell E11 in this situation. And I press the F4 keyboard shortcut to lock down and make an absolute reference there. Next up, what row number are we interested in? Well, I'm looking for the row that has region three in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to match region three against all the entries in this A column down the side. So I use M-A-T-C-H and open the parentheses. Now, if you haven't used the match function a ton, you'll wanna take your mouse, click on the word match up at the top of the screen, and you'll see that your function arguments dialog box has now switched over to be about the match function. So here we go to look up value. We say, okay, we're, we're definitely looking for region three. And let's make sure that we lock that down to an absolute reference using the F4 keyboard shortcut. And the array that region three could be in includes A4 down to A11. And once again, F4 locks that down. Those of you who are more accustomed to using VLOOKUP, you probably already know that in VLOOKUP you need to use FALSE at the end to be able to find an exact match. Well, in the same way, in the MATCH function, in the MATCH type box right here, we need to put in the number zero to say, find me an exact match for region three within that A column. Now we take our mouse, click on the word index up at the top of the screen, and it again puts our function arguments dialog box back to being the index function. So once again, I use M-A-T-C-H in the column number dialog box, and I click up here on the word match in the formula bar. I'm looking for the value of week one, which is in cell H3. I don't want to lock this down to an absolute reference because when I autofill this to the right, I'd like it to be a reference to H2, excuse me, week two, and then week three, and then week four. So I leave that a flexible or a relative reference, and I move over to the lookup array. The lookup array is from B3 across to E3, and once again, I want to make sure that we're always looking in those four cells so use the F4 keyboard shortcut to lock it down. Finally, the match type is again zero. Clicking back on the word index, you can see here why I called this an index and double match. Because I said, if you take this entire table right here, I wanna match a region going in this direction and I want to match a week going in this direction. I complete this by clicking okay and I can auto fill across and again, go ahead and format this. 
Now to make sure I know what I'm talking about, let's take the extra step of conditionally formatting this table over here on the left. So I'm going to highlight from region one down to the dollar value right here. And I want to make sure that if we're matching with region three, that it highlights all of the region three row. So I go to the home tab to conditional formatting and I'm looking to create a new rule because this is going to be used across cells that don't actually say region one, two, and three in them. So I go to new rule right here, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And I want to set an equal sign, region three right there, cell I15 equal to, and then we'll start with cell A4. Now here's the tough part, of course, cell A4 does not say region three in it, so it's not going to match up. But for all the rest of the cells, it's still going to say is I15 equal to A4 because there are dollar signs on the letter A and on the number four, that makes it an absolute reference. Now, I want it to be able to fill down to the fifth row, the sixth row, the seventh row, where regions one, two, three, and four are but I don't want it to be able to fill across to the B column because the B column doesn't say region in it. So I'll leave the dollar sign on the letter A and take the dollar sign off of the number four, making this a mixed reference. Now we just go ahead and use the formatting. Let's call this bolded and filled in with, uh, let's make it green and then hit OK, and hit OK. And just like that, region three is quickly highlighted. I can switch up to region five. You can see here region five gets highlighted and the entries go in here. And now it's very simple. This is the reason why I used index and match to pull these values out to the side. It's because now all I have to do is click on this little table right here, go to insert and you know, maybe let's make a column chart for example, right? We can clean this up a touch. I'm just taking color off of different areas here. And then I can line this up in whatever way makes me satisfied. Looking good. And again, here, if I go to region five and switch this to region eight, if I switch it to region one, you can see the conditional formatting changes, the table up here changes, and the chart that matches that table changes simultaneously. So using index and double match gives me the capacity to create a dynamic chart on the fly.